I'll start with Lou Samoji. Lou? I don't know why I said that. It just, <laughs> it just sounded really good. Lou, what do you got? Because you're always at the end. I thought maybe if we hit you early, you wouldn't be prepared. <laughs> I'm flattered that you would remember. Uh, any updates injury-wise uh, from the week? Folks <coughs> look good. I think, I think Tarin's ready to, to play. Um, he's had a good week. He's got his, uh, you know, I think his uh, ability to cut and, um, you know, uh, impact the game. So I, I expect him to, to be able to help us. Um, let me think if there was anybody. Um, Pete. Um, Mukwa, I, I think Pete's going to be able to give us some, some, some reps if we need him uh, in, in our depth. His ankle is much better. Uh, those are really the two guys that weren't able to, uh, to answer the bell for us. What brought Pete Mukwa to, you know, to the conversation in the last couple of weeks? But right before he got hurt, he, he must have made uh, a big step up. A little, little bit more 3-4, have a nose, two-gap guy, big fella, you know, can handle um, – you know, some some two gap responsibilities. You know, he's a big, big, powerful kid. Last few weeks, you were kind of concerned about how they were practicing on a Thursday. Um, did that improve this week? And did you, did you see a team that was kind of focused on its practice week? After the yeah, season? yeah, they're 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 ready. I mean, they just have to break through. I mean, they're they're doing all the things I'm asking them to do. They just they just got to go win. I mean, it's it's going to happen. Um, I would have liked it to happen, you know, a few weeks ago, but. And they would have as well, but they're ready to win. Uh, they're doing all the right things. Their attitude is great. Preparation's been really good. Um, their 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 energy is really good. You know, getting ready for the games. We just you know we're going to be in close games. We just got to finish them. And and that's that's the will. That's that um, you know single-minded focus. Um, you know and and. I think they, they clearly understand that. So they're, they're ready to win. Um, you mentioned Bolson. Josh Adams, what have you seen from him? What do you need? That last week's kind of a wash, I suppose, in, in those <coughs> conditions. If you run the slop, you can run the slop. And if not, but what do you kind of need for him going forward as your lead back? Um, you know, I, I think, you know, Josh has been, um, I think he's been fine. I mean, I think, you know, you, you come in with high expectations every year, but. Uh, I think he's done what we've asked him to do. Um, you know, him and Dexter, you know, have been a really good tandem. Um, so I, I don't think that, that we're going to ask him to do any more. I think he's going to continue to um, feel more comfortable uh, as the season progresses. I think that you'll see a lot more from Josh um, as the season unfolds. Brian, you spent some more time, you said, with the defensive backs, thanks to Tom's question on Tuesday. Um, just your impressions of how Todd Light is fitting in with that group, with the young group, and and his comfort level with their youth. Yeah, uh, it's a good question. You know, for me, it's it's been also an opportunity for me to really um, evaluate our coaches as teachers, and I've been pleased. You know, I, I look the first thing that I look for is communication and relationships, and. You know, I think he's done a really good job in both those areas. Um, the the way we were teaching was more of a um, we weren't breaking out into individual groups, and so Todd didn't really have that opportunity as much. He has now um, that opportunity to really have his defensive backs and his meeting room um, to himself, and um, I like his preparation. Uh, I like the fact that he can relate uh, a lot of his experiences to what we're teaching. And he gets along very well with his players. You know, he's got a, obviously a great uh, background, but that wouldn't be enough, you know, just to have played the game and have a, a great background. It certainly helps, but he's a, he's a good communicator. And, he, and he, he's, he's firm. And 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 uh, demanding, but he's he's fair with his his kids, and he does a nice job. Deshaun's name has come up 
a lot as a possible first round draft choice, maybe even a first pick of the 2017 draft. I realize in the small picture getting ready for Stanford, that's not what you want to be thinking about. But in the bigger picture, do you talk to him about that during the season, how to manage that? Or is he just one of those guys that's so focused that that conversation doesn't need to happen? We talked about it before the season and that um, we would not let any of um, any of that kind of, whether it be Heisman talk or draft status talk, affect his preparation uh, and um, get in the way of um, playing for Notre Dame. So we, we had that conversation before the season started. So no need to, to really delve into it uh, because we, we spent enough time on that topic uh, prior to the season. Um, Brian, oh, I know. <laughs> Brian um, I wanted to follow up on something that you mentioned, uh, I guess, Tuesday um, when asked about, I guess, getting advice elsewhere. And you said you would kind of reflect on your 27 years of coaching experience. Um, I wanted to know if you could share kind of some examples of um, maybe time, I guess, when you thought that you had similar, a similar makeup um, of your team. I know, like, I guess it was like your last year at Central Michigan where you started like two and three but finished 10 and four, and also your first year here where you kind of had a slow start but ended up finishing um, pretty well. Were there any other examples, I don't know if there are any other examples or if you were looking at those seasons and if, if that's something that Everywhere you that I have been, I've had similar scenarios um, where where our team is is um, you know uh, do, doing the things that they need to do um, and it's just a matter of time before they're going to start winning and, and I believe that this group's going to win for a long time there's a lot of young players that um, are are growing and, and learning and so as I look at this group, it reminds me of some groups that I've had, you know, at other stops along the way. So um, I'm very confident that, um, that it's, as I said, they're going to start winning uh, because they're doing the things that I've seen winners do. And, and that is you have to stop losing before you start winning. And so their preparation, their attitude, all the things that I just mentioned earlier, they're doing those things. And, and we're, not, we're not outmanned uh, to the point where, yeah, we've got some young players that are, are inexperienced. This is, a, I think, the least experienced team that has been here since 1972. So it, it's, it's um, but it's a team that, that has really good players and are only going to get better. They just need a little bit more seasoning and experience and they're gaining that. So I see it coming and it reminds me a lot of some other teams that I've coached um, at other stops. Is there one in particular that it really reminds you of? Yeah, it does. It reminds me of my uh, Grand Valley. I told my team this, matter of fact. It reminds me of my Grand Valley State team in 1999. We went 5-5-1 five, five, and one. and um, I think then we went 50 and three or 50 and four. Um, so make sure you get that out, that we're ready to go 50 and four. <laughs> I'm sure that'll be out there somewhere. And uh, Kelly is uh, saying something about going undefeated and winning five national championships. But it reminds me of a team that uh, once they gain their confidence and once they um, breakthrough, they're, they're going to have some success for a while. So obviously something that you did back then worked. <laughs> I mean, is there... Um, are Played you a lot of young players. players. You had a lot of young players? Yeah, yeah, a lot of young players. Played a lot of young players. Let them experience it. Um, held them to high standards. We've heard that before. Um, you know, and, and, and really, you know, just again, didn't make any excuses, you know. Um, they were young, but, but um, 
you know, pushed them pretty hard, knowing that that uh, that they were going to be successful. Brian, uh, Asmar came in last night, and I think he had his four midterms on his mind. Yeah. Uh, he had but two hours sleep last night. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. How do you know that? Because of their phones, they do. do you no, know? we. I have a TV screen in my office that that has all of our players' um, sleep. Uh, has all of their their metrics every single day, so he had two hours sleep. Uh, uh, we had some guys that had one or two or three hours sleep. Yeah. Okay. Well, in light of that, where does he fit in with the group? You, you know, you got Greer Martini, you got Tavon Coney, and you got Asmar. As you kind of develop all those guys together, you know, how does he fit there? How does he compare with like? play diagnosis at this point and so forth? Um, you know, he, he played really well uh, last week. Uh, I, I, think, I think he's learning the, the, the subtleties of the game. Uh, I think the first thing that came with Asmar was uh, a raw athletic package. Extremely athletic, uh, fast, uh, Tavon, um, a better sense of the subtleties of the game. And a combination of the two is, is a pretty dynamic. It's, it's, a, it's a great one-two, if you will. Greer Martini gives us versatility, third down, um, and just a guy that can do a lot of jobs for us. So they're really uh, different players, but all add a little bit to the mix for us to give us you know, a pretty strong rotation there. Good. Good. Mike do just real quick on Mike do what's going on. Yeah, there. he he uh, he went through some light practice this week. I think next week we, we're going to pat him up and, and get him rolling uh, on Tuesday. And when we come back from from by, um, we're hopeful that you know he can start to get involved into the practice structure. Thank Good. You, All right. Thanks.